The morning after the election, my first thought was, damn, you know, I had not only been calling the election for Trump for a year and a half, I had made four rather detailed videos on uh, Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Arizona saying Trump would carry those states with details and even vote projections. My first thought was, maybe I should just go in and delete everything. I, I never said that, you know. I said, that's, that's cowardly and I'm not a coward. So I'm not going to take them down. I'm going to leave them up there. And if you know, people want to make fun of me, that's fine. I mean, that, that's life. That's what you, you know, you play ball, you play ball. Sometimes you strike out. But, this, but it was strange because the first thing was, like, I, I noticed Tuesday night, election day, that actually I'd called Florida right. I mean, I not only said Trump would win, I had said he'd win between 250 and 350,000 votes. The last time I looked, he's around 280,000 votes. So I'm within my margin, close to the midpoint. I said, you know, actually the model I used in Florida worked. It was accurate. And then I thought, you know, Arizona, although you know, I don't know how that's going to go yet. Maybe it'll go for Biden. Maybe Trump will pull it out. But despite, I mean, my call, if you go back and look at the Arizona vote, I didn't say, you know, there's no way Trump could lose, which I did in Florida. I actually said it was too close to call. You know, had, Trump won by 100,000 last time or 100,000 more Democrat voters. You know, basically the model was zero. It could go either way. And if you look, you know, I said, whoever wins, it'll probably be less than 100,000. And whoever wins, it's probably going to be less than 100,000. So actually, the model worked in Arizona. And I thought, why, didn't, why was I so far off in North Carolina and Pennsylvania where I had said that there's no way Biden can win those states? Trump's going to win by hundreds of thousands of votes. And I said, you know, where did I go wrong? What mistake did I make? And I thought about it for a second. You know, basically, Trump, during the years that he's been president, the last four years, Republicans gained about 300,000 voters in Pennsylvania. There's no reason, and he won the last time without them. Why didn't he win this time? Well, there's a huge turnout for Democrats in Pennsylvania. It was the same thing happened in uh, North Carolina. Actually, the same thing happened in Florida. The Democrat vote is actually up in Florida. Biden got 15% more voters than Hillary did. The problem was, you know, Trump got like 22% more. He did even better, which wasn't the same case. Actually, in Pennsylvania, he did get more votes than he did everywhere. If you look at Trump, he got more votes than he did in 2016. So I said, well, it's got to be turnout. Turnout is where I went long. Basically, I was using a model where the turnout you know, stayed relatively stable, and the turnout was just much higher than I had assumed. And although it didn't make a big difference in Florida or Arizona, it obviously did in North Carolina and Pennsylvania. That's it. So I said, well, just how much, what was you know, Biden's turnout? And it's very interesting. Biden got about 10% more votes than Hillary Clinton. Well, that's conceivable. The Biden-Harris ticket is better than the uh, Hillary-Tim uh, Kaine ticket. Uh, maybe, but to the tune of another 10 million votes. You know, Trump got more votes, too. Trump got more votes than Hillary got in 2016. It's just, I mean, Trump lost to Hillary by 3 million votes in a popular vote. He lost to Biden by 4 million votes. But Biden got 10 million more votes. So basically, Trump picked up millions of extra voters, too. But then I thought, if, if you, what about 2008? You know, Biden-Harris did better than Obama-Biden by about 9%. And I said, you know, how do you explain that? How do you explain this increase Democrat turnout, because that's the key. So I got to come up with what could be the explanation for that, or explanations for that. I came up with three hypotheses. No particular order. Hypotheses one, voter fraud. That would explain it. Hypotheses two, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are just a, an attractive, charismatic, popular ticket. Hypothesis three, they're not, but people, Democrats hate Donald Trump 
and they'll go to the poles in droves to get rid of them. Okay, so those are the three hypotheses. Let's take two and three. The Biden-Harris popularity, I mean, to sort of paraphrase uh, Lloyd Benson, you know, I, I knew Barack Obama as president. Joe Biden is no Barack Obama. You know, Kamala Harris, she didn't make it to Iowa. She dropped out in December. And I did a quick look at California, her home state. I said, well, maybe, maybe that explains it. Nope. The Democrat vote dropped in California by a half million. Dropped by 500,000. I said, wow. And then exit polls show that Trump did better with minorities than previous Republican presidents. He got something like a third of the minority vote. You know, Hispanics, African-Americans, East Asians, South Asians, others, you know. So that doesn't seem to fit. I mean, if, if putting Harris on the ticket doesn't seem to have actually helped him. Even with African-Americans, they lost ground. I've seen estimates he got about 12% of the vote, African-American vote, and more of African-American males, maybe over 20% of African-American males. So putting Harris on the ticket doesn't seem to have been the key. So Biden popularity, no, nah, that can't be the case. That leaves us with Trump unpopularity. Now, of course, among the people who supported Trump, Trump's actually more popular than he was four years ago. If you look at Republican vote, even in the states where Trump lost, it basically went up everywhere. Trump did better almost every state. Different percentages, but, you know, the old saying, we've all heard it, a rising tide lifts all boats. You know, the tide goes up, all the boats go up. You know, one boat doesn't go up, one boat doesn't go down. Tide lifts, all the boats rise. That's pretty much the Trump electorate. He did better than in 2016, and his vote totals go up in every state. Not always enough to win, to counter what's going on with Biden, but they show improvement virtually everywhere. Would the inverse be true for Biden? Biden increased his voter turnout by about 15%, which is really a big jump. It's, uh, I mean, it's not quite accurate. It's close to accurate to say the last time we had that much, more people than that turnout for a big voter. I mean, the voter turnout this time was higher than it was when uh, in the Depression when Roosevelt was elected. Substantially higher. I mean, as, as I was saying, a joke could be, you could say we haven't seen voter turnout like that since 1860, right before the Civil War. But that, that's another, another one of my playlists. But it's true. Uh, or when our politics were corrupt in the late 19th century, which is also true. We had big voter turnout then. But that, once they got rid of patronage and things like that, it started going down. So... How could I test that? How could I test if, if the same thing happened with Biden as happened with Trump, but on a larger scale, a rising tide lift all, lifts all boats? So what I decided to do was to make a list of states, not counting Florida, which I had already looked at and gone over, that had a lot of electoral votes, were substantial states, and were either toss-up states or solidly blue states with many electoral votes, sort of as a uh, control group. So I left out states like Hawaii, Delaware, Rhode Island, Wyoming, Montana, things like that. And I put together this list. And the hypothesis to test the anti-Trump, or even if you want to test a pro-Biden hypothesis, either the, the two of the three things I had mentioned as possibilities other than corruption. You know, pro-Biden vote, anti-Trump vote, some combination of the two. The way to test that hypothesis would be you would expect to see Democrat votes going up everywhere, just like Trump votes went up everywhere. You would see, not necessarily even, but if the overall Biden vote went up 15%, Maybe we'd see percentages from like 12 to 18% or 10 to 
in all these states. And it didn't matter if they were swing states or not. You would expect if progressives are running wild anti-Trump, one might think that California, the voting output there for the Democrats would be sky high. But I'd already seen that it wasn't. They actually lost votes, 500,000 in California, which was awfully suspicious. And if you're wondering why they're having problems in some of those house races in California, that's why. The, the Democrats had a half million fewer people turn out to vote, and the Republican vote in California actually went up. So the Trump tide rose and lifted the votes in California, the congressional races. The Biden tide of 15% actually saw the Democrat races sink. So right away, I've got an anomaly. But what I want to do now is to go over those charts. The chart, I should say. There's just one chart. And to look at the states and see how many anomalies there are and see if there are any patterns that emerge that would either support the idea of a pro-Biden, anti-Trump explanation for the extra 15% of the vote he got or not. Because if you can't explain the increase in the Democratic vote by you know, B or C, like they were voting for Biden or they were voting against Trump, then the only thing that's left is A, which is voter fraud. So let's take a look at that chart. Okay, here's the chart that I developed. And when I initially put it in, I didn't have anything with an asterisk or italicized. But as I put this together and I popped the numbers in and then I got done and, and I just took a quick glance, I noticed something was strange. You can see, you know, how much Biden went up. It was about 15 percent. That's the 15 percent over here. But what immediately caught my attention was California. In California, the Democrats got 500,000 fewer votes. That's about an 11 percent decline. Now, I think blue states, I think progressive states, I think, you know, the progressive model for the future, it's California. And yet, despite antipathy toward Trump, despite the fact that Kamala Harris is from California, the this is a percent. The voters, the voter turnout among Democrats in California dropped a half million which is about 11% of a total vote. That's why they're having problems in some of those House races out there, because fewer Democrats voted. Republican turnout in California actually increased. Now, they still won basically two-thirds of the vote. I mean, there was no way the Republicans were going to take California, but it does hurt in the you know congressional races and counties that aren't totally blued out yet. So I thought that was strange. And then I started going down the list. There's another one. You know, I said, what's that? Illinois. Now, Illinois is, again, one of these blue states that you would think you'd see the surge of, uh, of uh, Democrat voting, and it actually went down. And then Maryland caught my eye. 310,000 fewer votes. Again, another solidly blue state. And we got to New Jersey, 5,000 fewer votes. Now, that's right across from Philadelphia. Maryland borders on Pennsylvania to the south. And then you go down to New York, 330,000 fewer voters for the Democrats, which also borders on Pennsylvania. So I so thought, that's strange. And I, I went and I looked at Ohio, and sure enough, Republican or Democrat turnout in Ohio also declined. So basically, all the states that border on Pennsylvania, Democrats saw a decline in turnout. Now, if, if you know, going through the possibilities I'd raised earlier in this video, you're looking at either, you know, uh, enthusiasm for the Biden ticket or hatred of Trump in some sort of combination, you would expect Democrat turnout to be like the tide. A rising tide lifts all boats. You would expect to see it go up everywhere. But it didn't go up everywhere. And then I thought, what do these states have in common? Except for Massachusetts. All these states with the asterisk are blue states where Donald Trump didn't stand a chance. In other words, if you start with the assumption, a hypothesis, that there was voter fraud, where wouldn't you need to commit voter fraud? You wouldn't need to commit voter fraud in California, Illinois, Massachusetts, Maryland, New Jersey, New York. You're going to win those states anyway. Now, Oregon's a blue state, but with Oregon, with all the stuff going on in Portland, they might have been concerned about Oregon. 
So maybe they would commit voter fraud out there. Now, this isn't proof that they did it. I'm just saying if you take that as a working hypothesis, this would seem to make sense. Massachusetts, I don't know. I can't really explain Massachusetts. I don't know why they would have thought they were going to lose Massachusetts. Maybe, I don't know. I, I really don't have an explanation for Massachusetts. So then lo let's look at the other states that were either, uh, you know, weren't blue and that they needed to win. They didn't need to win all of them, but they needed to win several of them. And let's assume we were working with the hypothesis that this is fraud, that that's where they would commit the fraud. Arizona, plus 40% in turnout over 2016. That's a huge increase in turnout. And if you're down here and you look at Nevada, plus 20%. Now, both these states border on California, which went down 11%. But Arizona goes up 40, Nevada goes up 20. Colorado, 27% increase. Georgia, 33% increase. Wow, you know, that, that's, that's a lot. Michigan, 23% increase. Minnesota, 26% increase. North Carolina, 21%. New Hampshire, which some people thought, you know, Trump campaigned up there, he might win, 21% increase. New Mexico, 30% increase. Nevada, 20%. Oregon, 32% increase. Despite all the things that have been going on in Portland and everything else, Democrat went up 32% and Pennsylvania up 15%. And again, Pennsylvania is really strange. Every state bordering on Pennsylvania went down by small or significant uh, amounts. Pennsylvania went up 15%. And I thought, you know, what do you make of all this? I mean, it does seem awfully suspicious that the states that were not being contested by Trump, the Democrats actually lost votes. In states that they need that Biden needed to win to secure the magic number of 270, you see these huge increases. I mean, 40 percent. The national average is 15 percent, but 40 percent, 27, 33. Massachusetts didn't go up much. Uh, 23, 26, 21, 21, 20, 32, and 15. And I thought this is, you know, I don't know. What do you make of that? Is, is this, it's certainly an anomaly. Is it proof of statistical proof of voter fraud? No, I'm, I'm not claiming that it is. But I'm saying, you know, how do you explain it? You can say, well, it's enthusiasm or, or hatred of Trump. That's fine. But why up 40% in Arizona, down 11 in California? Why in every state surrounding and bordering Pennsylvania, do the numbers drop? But in Pennsylvania, they go up 15%. How do you explain that? And I don't have an explanation. If you, again, if, if you use the explanation that, you know, it was just hatred of Trump, enthusiasm for the ticket, you know, a rising tide should lift all boats. The numbers should have gone up everywhere. You know, I would expect to see Democrat turnout in every state go up. But that's not what we find. And in a state like California, which is as blue as you get, it dropped 11%. While in neighboring states, it goes up, uh, what, 40 and 20%. I mean, the difference between Arizona and California is, is like 51% in, in turnout. Again, I, don't, I can't, I'm not saying this again, I'll repeat it again. I don't want to get a band on YouTube. I'm not saying this proves fraud. It's simply a statistical anomaly. So those are the numbers. As I said at the beginning in the first section of this video, three hypotheses. Fraud, people love Biden, people hate Trump. I don't see any evidence that there was this Biden wave. If it was a Biden wave, it would happen. It would look like the Trump wave, where basically Republican votes went up almost everywhere. Biden votes went down. California. Harris is from California. Down. Minority votes. Down. Trump got about a third. 32%, something like that. 
So let's get rid of that one. Antipathy toward Trump? I mean, I well know. Democrats, progressives, liberals all hate Donald Trump. They all want to see him go. Okay, we tested for that. Do we have this anti-Trump wave? No. In states where the Democrats are secure, votes go down. California. All the states surrounding Pennsylvania, Democrat votes decline. Not just in percentage terms, in actual terms, raw numbers, a couple hundred thousand fewer people, Democrats, fewer Democrats voted in New York and Maryland. So that sort of kicks out the, you know, this rising tide. There is no tide. Surprisingly, strangely, the states where Biden racks up these extra votes are all the states he needed to win the presidency, the swing states, you know, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida. They didn't get enough in Florida to win, but they still got 15%, 40% in Arizona. While in states that they didn't need to win, surprisingly, their vote totals go down. Are, are you t trying to tell me that Pennsylvania Democrats are more progressive and more focused against Trump than California Democrats and progressives? I, you know, I, don't, I don't buy it. So what's that leave us with? Fraud. So do I think I've proved the case for fraud? No. What I think I have proved is that there's an anomaly in voting patterns. I can't figure out other than fraud, how else to account for those anomalies? The ones I'm hearing on the news, you know, antipathy toward Donald Trump, don't make sense. You know, when, and when they talk in those stories, the stories that talk about that, they always focus on like Pennsylvania, Georgia, you know, oh, people hate Trump. What about California? How do you explain that? I can't. And then there's Massachusetts, which I also can't explain, but that's, I can never explain Massachusetts. So that's what I'm left with. You know, going into this video, I was a you know, kind of uh, skeptical about fraud allegations. I mean, I know they do funny things in Philadelphia. But, you know, maybe we'll see, see what comes up. But after going through what I did to make this video, I really am suspicious now. I'm far more suspicious was at the end of making this video, this process, than I was at the beginning. Because, you know, I, he went up, Trump, Biden went up 15% in Florida. I don't think there was like a lot of corruption here. But, you know, Trump went up too. But I can't explain it in the other states. And I can't explain why they went down 6% in California. Or why they went down over 300,000 in New York. I don't have an explanation for that other than they didn't need to win in New York and California, so they didn't cheat. They needed to win in Pennsylvania, so they did, and the other states. What do you think? Do you have an alternative hypothesis to fraud that you would like to put forward? Let me know in a comment. I'd love to hear it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share it with your friends. That helps get the word out. And until the next time, don't give up. Remember, Gore v. Bush went on for over 30 days. It's only been a week. We've got a way to go. And we'll see what happens. And until then, keep fighting.